This video is sponsored by Aeropress. The DF64 made waves as the first of many niche killer grinders for the home with 64mm flat burrs, a relatively smooth albeit messy workflow, great performance, and an attractive price tag. But it still couldn't hold a candle to the clean workflow of the niche zero, and definitely lacked in the overall build quality department. Following the DF64, we've seen a plethora of grinders, with new ones dropping seemingly every week, all trying to achieve this race to the bottom with the best price to performance ratio. With the Gen 2 release of the DF64, Turin has truly struck that sweet spot in the price to performance ratio while improving upon the build quality with workflow improvements and is easily my new go-to recommendation for an all-rounder grinder capable of both espresso and filter in a $400 package. This is the new Turin DF64 Gen 2. I know this driven by jealousy. Uh -huh. But my soul is nothing you own. No. So first, comparing the original DS64 to the new DS64 Gen 2, the build differences are pretty minimal on the exterior, but still a nice difference. Although I don't have the black version of the Gen 1 to compare to, the exterior finishes are still quite different. The new Gen 2 has a much more premium feeling exterior with a smooth matte black powder coated finish. They've simplified the exterior components with this almost unibody-like design. All the tolerances feel a little bit tighter, the spout now has a more integrated look similar to the DF83, the rotating collar is a little bit more premium with an all-metal build that doesn't feel flimsy or plasticky, and the button placement has now been moved to the side. In fact, as I'm going through these new features, this feels a lot like a shrunken DF83, which is a really good thing because that was one of my favorite grinders that I have ever tested. You still have this metal adjustable ring that acts as an indicator for your grind size, and you still have a bellows system, which has also been improved. The seals around the edges seem a little bit tighter, resulting in some serious air movement out the funnel. Opening up the grind chamber, you can now really see some improvements. A lot less wasted space, some more premium feeling machining work, and an easily swappable set of burrs. My grinder did come with some alignment issues, although this was easily fixable with some aluminum shims. And the toolless disassembly process is quite nice for cleaning the grind chamber. The only thing you really need is a screwdriver to either remove the burrs, and that's only if you need to align it, swap it out, or really want to go in for a super deep clean. Workflow here has improved a ton. The addition of a deionizer helps minimize chaff and static to a minimum, and retention here is seriously good, nearly zero. In fact, the bellows can sometimes cause a little bit more of a mess than it's worth using, but you should still use them in between shots or doses, and to show you just how this grinder performs, I'm going to be brewing a cup with the sponsor of today's video, Aeropress. The Aeropress remains one of the most compact and versatile brewers of all time. With competitions dedicated to this single brewer, it has had a huge impact on the specialty coffee world and getting people into the realm of brewing specialty coffee. With the all-new Aeropress Clear, you can now better visually understand what's happening in your brewer. You can see things like coffee crust forming, certain particles settling at the bottom, and generally just watching your water go from clear to that delicious bean juice that we call coffee, and it's simply mesmerizing to watch. Combine with the DF64 Gen 2 and you've got a compact coffee station that's going to brew you some seriously delicious cups of coffee in the morning. Check out the all-new Aeropress Clear at aeropress.com slash chris15 for an exclusive 15% discount. Once again, thanks to Aeropress for sponsoring this video. And if you paid close attention to my workflow with the DF64 Gen 2, you'll see that I used the Bella system after getting my dosage out into the Aeropress just to clear the chute and chaff just a little bit. I've noticed that bellowing into a cup full of grinds does push so much air that it can blow some of the grinds out of the cup and cause a little bit of a mess. And speaking of the cup, I am glad that they have made it fully metal now instead of plastic, and even added this little ring which uses a little o-ring on top for a cleaner workflow, although that does lead me into a few nitpicks that I have with this grinder. So here's what I don't like. This grinder is loud. Unfortunately, this grinder is still not the nice and quiet grind experience that you might be seeking. Like, you know how at concerts sometimes it's just so loud that your ears physically start to cringe a little, almost blocking out the sound? That's what this grinder sounds like up close. It's a very high-pitched sound that does pierce the ears, especially when grinding for espresso. A little bit less so when you're grinding for filter or coarser doses. And another thing that doesn't contribute to a pleasant sound profile at all is using the ring on top of the dosing cup, as the vibrations from the grinder cause this ring to vibrate against the cup, and the metal-on-metal -metal contact leads to even more unpleasant noise. And despite supposedly having a deionizer built in, the grounds coming out were still a little bit on the chaffier side, especially with some lighter roast, but nothing a little RDT didn't help with. 
Retention with the little plastic chute was annoying, so I removed it altogether and found better results that way, though I did notice that removing it has caused my grounds to unevenly come out on the right side of the chute rather than in the middle, but not really a big deal as long as it's making it into the dosing cup. Now my preferred method of using this grinder has been to RDT, followed by gently using the bellows afterwards, followed by bellowing a little bit harder in between doses to clear out the fines and chaff that might remain in the grinds chamber. And much like the original, the DF64 really hits the sweet spot. Literally. I've been brewing beans from Tiny Arms lately, a roaster local to Massachusetts, and the lighter roasts have had a great amount of clarity and almost juice-like texture. Sweetness is really pulled through in the cup with very minimal muddiness. The texture is rich and velvety, which I really like. Now, you're not going to achieve a level of clarity in a cup from something like the DF83 or the Niche Duo, at least not with these stock burrs. And generally, I would steer you towards larger flat burrs if you do want something of a more tea-like body and a lighter mouthfeel and higher clarity. In the espresso realm, shots were similarly a great middle ground. Generally, I found that a lot of 64mm flat burr grinders have become that norm of a burr set that strikes a balance of something that's different from conical while not being too far away on the huge grinder end with ultra-high clarity profile shots and brews. It was a little bit more challenging to dial in shots due to the burrs still not being super perfectly aligned, which honestly could just be a skill issue on my part. But with some fine tuning, I'm sure you can get some even better shots than I've already been achieving, which personally I think has already been pretty good. So this grinder is going to be my current choice for a price to performance ratio. At $400, you're not going to quite break the bank just yet, and you're still going to be receiving a very capable grinder that pulls both yummy espresso and brews fruity bean juice. The Gen 2 model with the cleaner workflow, new materials, and better build really makes this grinder a no-brainer decision in the sub $500 price range. So those are my thoughts on the new DF64 Gen 2. I hope you enjoyed the review, and as always, drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.